Bengals have a very disciplined defensive line. And I think their whole defense is just a product of we just coach well, you know, because if you look at the names on that defense, they won't necessarily blow you away with like, uh, you know, with names or with like uh, notoriety, something like that. Random. Will still, would you trade a fifth round pick for uh, Kadarius Tony? Maybe a fourth? Like yeah, that? I, I trade a fifth round pick for Amari Cooper or, or Kadarius Tony. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I feel you, bro. Uh, I <laughs> I, bro, I don't even know why. I just wanted to press it. <laughs> you want to hit that? Yo, yo, look, look. You, you want to hit that button? Is Kellen Moore not not running the football? Like he just he, he I just I gotta pay, I gotta Tourette's my way through this pass again. You just had to press the. You just you had to press. Yes. Anyway, I, I got the names for you: Lindstrom and Shepley. I kept saying Dempy. It's Dakota Shepley. So Lindstrom, Shepley, and Alarcone are your interior options on the practice squad. Basically, fuck them. We in trouble, dog. <laughs> <laughs> we in trouble, dog. <laughs> we, need, we need Jason Peters in shape today. Yeah. All right. So um, the Cincinnati Bengals defensive line, we're looking at their defense right now, right? And as you go down the list, you see some names and you go, okay, well, I'm familiar with those names, but I wouldn't call them like superstar note noteworthy guys. And then you see some other names that you feel like, oh, well, I feel like them dudes is trash. We could take advantage of them. But when they all play together, they are a, a stingy group. They're a stingy group. They play hard. They run to the football and they play with really good technique. And that's going to be, you know, the big problem here because we got to run out there with Cooper Rush. So the fact that we have Cooper Rush and this, this, this is something else too that, that pissed me off royally will still in my mind, right? That's, that's, that's another sound drop. I wanted in my mind. I was like, all right, Cooper Rush, the quarterback. We're probably gonna have to run the ball a little bit more, right? Wouldn't wouldn't you say that that's the the traditional mindset that 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 you would think? Isn't that the first thing that come to your mind? Will still that Cooper rushes the quarterback? We should be running the ball more. Absolutely. Plus, plus the fact that we had success in the run game last week, we should probably just run some more. I went um last year, and I see Shaq the Vikings fan in here. I apologize, Shaq, but the last two years the Cowboys have beat the Vikings with Andy Dalton and Cooper Rush. Apologize. That's more of an indictment to y'all than the fact that, you know, Dalton or Cooper good or some shit. I looked up the numbers, Will, and I was like, I wonder what Cooper Rush did when he had to play, when he had to start. And I wonder how many carries he had. You know, we threw the ball 40 times with Cooper Rush last year, bro. Mm -hmm. And we still ran, I think, 23, 26 times. Still ran over 20 times. Z got 16 carries. Tony had seven. Cooper Rush had one of them. Yep. So, yeah, 23 times. So, in my mind, we walking into this thing thinking, oh, well, we're just going to take Cooper Rush out of the game, man. We're just going to hand him the football. He's going to game manager his way through this. I go down to the wide receiver numbers. 19 isn't here anymore. 19 is here, but he's kicking for us. But uh, Cooper had eight, eight catches for 122 yards and a touchdown. Lamb had six catches, 112 yards, no, and no touchdowns. Cedric Wilson had three catches and 84 yards. Yeah, he bust like a 75 yarder on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, his long was uh, well, his average was uh, 28. So I think his long was that was that one big play that. I'm Can't, not trying to be funny. When I, I'm not trying to be funny when I say this, Will. And I'm not being devil's advocate. But do we have Cooper Rush fucked up? No, no, I don't think you have Cooper. Did you watch? See, you're looking at the numbers. Did you watch the game again? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. Well, how did you? Would you come away from the film? We need as as much yak as we as we possibly can, but <laughs> I don't think my, we're gonna have all. That. You see Go my ahead. tweet? What was your tweet? I, didn't I said. I said. I looked at the 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 film on on the Minnesota game. I looked at the Tampa game. I said. I'm again asking Kellen Moore. Please help out your quarterback. Yeah. Please, please help out your wide receivers. Please help out your tight ends and your running backs. If you think you're just going to drop back Cooper and he's just going to dice up somebody, you, you got him messed up. <laughs> I feel like when I first saw these numbers, last year when I was younger, you know, I was 29 when this happened, 
I feel like last year when I saw this, I wasn't upset at Cooper Rush throwing 40 attempts. But today, as an old man, you're older, of course. But today, as an old man, I looked at he was 24 for 40. And I just immediately got sick of Kellen Moore. And Kellen Moore did nothing, but I just immediately got sick of Kellen Moore. Like, bro, first of all, how do we get to 40 attempts? And if we only got 24 completions, why do we keep throwing the football? You know what I'm saying? Like at, at, at some point, I would imagine that the idea is to keep feeding Zeke, but Zeke we, got his 16. I think we forget we had 13 points until the last 40 seconds of that game, which which I we agree. needed a miracle circus catch and, and from um Amari Cooper. It should have been an interception, but it was a miracle circus circus catch. Watch that tape again. Tell me you ain't gonna miss Amari Cooper. Tell me you don't miss it. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely miss Mark. Um, so in my mind, in my mind, I think the the game plan this year is we we gotta go. I, I don't think there's any reason that we have to go that we should go away from the run uh, this season because we just don't have those weapons at receiver anymore. You know what I mean? There's not a Cedric Wilson to get 80 yards. There's not a uh, Cooper to get 122. Dalton Schultz only had two catches for 11 yards last year. That I don't think that's going to be the case this year. I think Dalton's probably probably going to get fed a bunch. Even though I I think in that game I, I think the Vikings took Dalton away. I think they actually planned to take Dalton away, which is probably why you know Cedric got his hand got his hand full of catches or whatever. But what dudes on this wide receiver core will? And honestly, this can play into um this could play into uh roster management, right? Or you know the actors and inactors, right? If Dennis Houston is active because Dak trusts him. If Dak ain't playing, does that change Dennis Houston's game day stats? I mean, that's that's what we're saying, right? Uh, well, Dennis Houston, Dak trust, whatever. But the coaches obviously has to have to trust him too. Mm-hmm. They, they, D- Dak, listen, Dennis Houston ain't starting just because Dak likes him and Dak is endorsing him in the media. Like that, the coaches have to trust him as well. I, I don't think they're just gonna be like, "Up, oh, Dax out," and then it's Houston back on the bench. If you're only good for that, then you shouldn't be on this team at all, in my opinion. He probably shouldn't be on this team at all, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, he shouldn't be on the goddamn team, but he, but he's here, you know. And also, too, if this is gonna be a game to where we're mm-hmm. leaning on Cooper Rush. And we need as much yak as we can get. Two piece special, lots of hot sauce, and all the fries you can give me. We need wide receiver talent now more than I would say quarterback compatibility. Would this be the week that you bring up Jalen Tobert? Because if 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 you're gonna get like a, a like the better athlete, the better receiver, the the better yak guy, in my mind, Jalen Tobert should get the nod over Dennis Houston this week. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say so? J- J- Jalen Tobert. Should have got the nod last week. <laughs> I, I I really don't have answers for for the a lot of these questions are so is perplexing to me. But but the coach came out and said he ain't ready. It didn't sound yeah. like he was ready this yeah. week. Sick of this. So do I expect him to be up there? Maybe he's playing. You know, he's playing games and he will be up there. But he, this man came out and said, "Yeah, special teams and hamstring injury from May or June." <laughs> well, uh, you know when he was in uh, when he was in high school, you know uh, he uh, he uh, he uh, had a hangnail, uh, you know you know uh, five years ago. So we can't do nothing with him. Can't can't play him this year till he recovers from that. And I'm just up here like, bro, just I'm just looking like you don't realize how deficient your wide receiver room is until you look at the wide receivers last year and you look at Noah Brown. Hey, Noah Brown had a catch for seven yards last year. A catch for seven yards. Tony had a catch for a yard. On top of his seven seven carries. I don't know, man. You know, Vach is normally optimistic guy. I normally try to walk in and, and find bright sides out of everything. But I don't know if y'all notice this, because some people just think I'm just all positive all day, every day. If Dak ain't active, you won't get no positivity out of me. This shit, this shit looks it it looks rough. It looks rough for me. I think there was you know more hope last year when um Cooper Rush came in because you still had Amari Cooper out there, right? C.D. Lamb and Seth Wilson were your three go-to guys plus the other guys. That's that's just not going to be it out there on, on Sunday. So I don't, I, I'm with you. I don't think you can go out there and throw it 42 times. 
this this is a good yeah. defense. It's a stingy defense, man. I, I don't know if you well, you gonna break them down anymore, but this is not this defense. And Shaq, you can attest to this is a, a much better defense than the uh, Vikings were last year when the Cowboys faced them. And this offense is a much worse offense than the Cowboys uh, when they were when they faced the Vikings. So you know you have to help Cooper Rush out in this game. We can't go into this game. And there are some people who believe Cooper Rush is better than Dak Prescott. <laughs> you can't go into this game thinking Cooper Rush is a guy that's just going to carry your passing offense. Go watch that game last, last year. Go watch it. It was extremely erratic play. It wasn't like it was just this amazing uh, passing display of a game. It wasn't. You had the individual skill sets of Lamb, Cooper, and Seth Se- Wilson helping you. There. By the way, Seth Wilson had a beautiful dime on a 35-yard pass to C.D. Oh. Lamb. Amari Cooper was a savant in that game on a bad hammy. Mm. On a bad hammy. Who's your Amari Cooper this year? Dennis Houston? And that was that was about right before teams start doing the whole umbrella bracket thing. They're not they didn't play that in um in Minnesota last year. There, there was a lot of space. There was a lot. Talk about this on and I'm I'm apologize for going so far, but I really watched this and studied that film. It was a lot of space and respect the Minnesota Vikings were giving Amari Cooper and those boys. We finna see if that's going to be the case on Sunday. I think it gets bad, Will. I think we man, really right. about to go out there. I think All we're right, about bro. to go out there. Run that ball 45 times, man. Keep it close. Defense is good enough to keep it close. That, is, that, that I do agree. I, I do think that this defense will give you an opportunity, but I just don't think that this offense will give you an opportunity from that opportunity, you know? And it hurts me. It hurts See, me. See, this, this is what yeah, I mean, yeah. whoever this dude is here. If Cooper Rush completes a pass over 10 yards, he's better than he's better than, than Dak. See, this is... <laughs> uh, Guillotine 06 dropped the diamond super chat, says, Vach, every time you start a sentence off with In My Mind, I keep expecting you to break out the temptation silent night. That's that's the point. When I in my mind, that's that's my point. That's my point. And I got and I'm, I'm getting a sound drop soon, so don't tell nobody that. Uh, so if we're going to attack this Bengals defense, if we got to pass the ball, I do think there's avenues to do so. Will still Eli Apple over there. Hey, Eli Apple been getting picked on my whole life since I've been watching football. Eli Apple been getting his ass with me. He he still got a job. I think you you can come at them. My problem is Cooper Rush quarterback. Um, Jesse Bates is a really good free safety. They, they were actually, you know, trying to, you know, get his money situation figured out. Von Bell, who is another Ohio State guy like Eli Apple, I think you can kick his ass a little bit. I think you could you could take advantage of that dude. Problem is Cooper Rush at quarterback. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Logan Wilson is a is a linebacker. I think you can take advantage of, you know, in terms of like running back, uh, passing. But like if if Tony Pollard was a guy that can, you know, uh, go out, you know, go out into the uh, go out to the field or the boundary side, whichever side, and uh, you know, uh, the linebacker go with him. Logan Wilson goes with him. I think Tony's a guy that can take advantage of that. The problem is not only is Cooper Rush our quarterback, but Kellen Moore is our offense coordinator. I was I'm just about to say, you you keep saying Cooper Rush is the quarterback. I'm going to be well, completely of, honest with you. It ain't even him. It's both of them. I'm, I'm sick of both of them. Well, yes, Cooper Rush is clearly a downgrade to Dak Prescott. There's no, there's no arguing that. But I've seen, you know, coordinators overcome that for an extended period of time. I'm more worried about Kellen. Right. I'm more worried about Kellen. I feel like Cooper is confident in himself to try not to F up the game. Now, he's also not as talented. His arm is a noodle arm for the most part. So he may just end up throwing an interception or a bad pass just because he doesn't have that talent. But I think he'll try to play within himself. I don't trust Kellen to take advantage of an Eli Apple or uh, the, the, the linebacker. I thought he played a good game. Uh, the Logan cat. I thought he's pretty good. But and their linebackers are, are pretty quick, too. But I don't see him like getting matchups to help out Cooper Rush. That's what needs to happen. Again, protect Cooper Rush doesn't just mean protect him physically, right? With the offensive line, protect him in every area possible. <sighs> Try to help you out here, man. <laughs> I'm so I'm so I've never spoke of Kellen Moore in this way before. I'm so sick of him. Yeah. I see what y'all mean. Hey, Cowboy Nation, I apologize. I see what y'all mean. 
Y'all been shitting on Kel- Look, I see. Look, even when Kellen Moore was good, and I was like defending Kellen Moore, y'all was talking shit about Kellen Moore. Hey man, look, look, bro. I, I I take it all back. I take back all my respect. I'm sick of Kellen Moore, bro. Sick of, him. you know. And and not that it's fair to say, I right, Kellen Moore win us five games with Cooper Rush. I ain't saying that's fair. But the Geno Smith led Seattle Seahawks went out and beat the Broncos, bro. Yeah, 